Hallelujah. Praise God. Can we rise to our feet as we worship our maker? Father, we bless you, Lord. We exalt your name. Hallowed be your name, Jesus. Father, we glorify your name. Thank you, Jesus. hands to Jesus as we worship the most high.
reverence to our God. Can you bow your head and worship the Lord Almighty? Let's hold him. Let's bow down and worship him. He deserves it. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be glorified. He is the Almighty God, the creator of the universe, the giver of life. Let's thank him. Let's worship him. Let's appreciate him. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you because you have brought us thus far and you will not leave us behind. Thank you, Heavenly Father. As we continue this worship, we pray your very presence will abide with us in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Shall we be seated, please? Testimony time. You didn't hear me well. Testimony times. If you are overcomers, please can you come and give all the glory to God as brethren are listening to you. Can we encourage them to come? Let's encourage them. Let's encourage them. We are all overcomers. Praise the Lord. Please start. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. This morning I've come to return all the glory to God for the gift of life. On Wednesday, he added another year to my years. I want to give him praise. Birthday. Hallelujah. Um, yesterday's program was especially for me. God who saw ahead ordained that program. Early hours of yesterday morning, I was lying down and I saw myself looking at myself on the bed. The way I put my hand and rested my head, I was waving it and I was seeing myself still in that same position. And the only thing that occurred to me in that state was to ask God for mercy. I said, Jesus, have mercy. Jesus, have mercy. Before I knew what was happening, I came back into myself and I'm here. Hallelujah. Today. I want to give God all the Hallelujah. glory for life. Praise God. To God be the glory. Please let us not take it with levity. Any prophetic declaration from this altar. The Lord has taken away the spirit of death and the influence of death from every one of us in Jesus' name. The next 85. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for his faithfulness. I've come to say thank you, Jesus, for joining my sis to Lagos. I especially want to thank him for my mother. I just, I was with her all through and I was looking at her and all I could keep saying is thank you, Jesus, when I remember how she fell ill last August and we had given up. She was almost gone. But I look at her now, how strong she is, disciplining everybody, looking after me, and asking how I am. I've come to return all thanks to God. Thank to you, God Jesus. God be the glory. God will keep our mommy for us. Next testify. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Alainka, and I'm here to appreciate God for his grace upon my life, for his blessings, for his deliverance and healing both spiritually and physically. Um, last Monday, when we went to Luke Bay for the program, that day, God delivered me. Because when pastor called for people that even when they sleep, they still wake up tired. The kind of work I do, I work with my mind a lot and creativity and many things. And I work throughout the day. And most times I get so tired. And when it gets to the time I'm supposed to rest, I still wake up very tired. My body becomes so heavy. And he called us out and he prayed for us. And since that Monday, from Tuesday, I noticed I got up so strong. Because even that same Monday, the way I woke up that Monday, I woke up with a backache and the way I was, I couldn't even walk well. But I thank God that from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, even this morning. Because sometimes when I, when I wake up, I'll have to take my time to just rest a little and before I can, I can get up. But I thank God that throughout this week, I was, I, I was waking up very strong. So I want to appreciate God for that miracle. And God has delivered me from that. To Hallelujah. God be the glory. I also want to thank God for today. It's going to be eight months, this, eight months this month that I lost my dad. And God has been keeping us together. God has given us the strength to be together in peace. I also want to appreciate God for my mom for giving her the strength. And also today, she, she just turned 68. 
today. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for that strength, for the grace that he has given us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay. Fast. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. I have come to judge God faithful. I have come return, to return all the glory to him. I have come to tell him thank you for what he has been doing over the life of my family. Starting from this year, though it has not been easy from one sickness to other, but I want to thank God that today, Daniel Chukwe Meka Madabuchi turns 11. I want to Hallelujah. thank God for adding another year for his life. It has been God all this while. I say may his name be highly exalted in the name of Jesus. To God be the glory. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you because through it all, you have kept us, you have given us testimonies. And thank you for giving us a pastor that when he prays, Cry and look up unto you, interfacing and interceding on our behalf. Thank you because you also always answer him. For today, Lord, we are looking up unto you. That once again, you prove yourself strong in our midst to bless everyone that fellowship here this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Good morning, brethren. Welcome to church. This is the Citizens Broadcast Network, TCBN. I am Olufunke Oloye. Our brothers and sisters online, welcome to church. Kindly share the link of today's service with your friends and loved ones so that they can worship with us. The QR code is on the screen. When you scan, it will show you all our social media handles. We thank God for the special services during the Easter period. To our lead pastor, we pray for more grace and strength upon your ministry in Jesus' name. And to us, brethren, we pray for awesome testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy New Month, dear brethren. Welcome to April, our month of commanding blessings. Please let's take a listen to the monthly declaration by our late pastor, Pastor Peter Balogo. This is April, the month of commanded blessings. Our scripture for the month is in 1 Kings 17 verse 3 to 4, New Living Translation. Go to the east and hide by Kerit Brook, near where it enters the Jordan River. Drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you. For I have commanded them to bring you food. What is a commanded blessing? A commanded blessing is a divine promise that carries within itself the irrevocable power for its fulfillment. His commanded blessings are activated by obedience. Obedience to what he asked for you to do. It could either be to go somewhere or to give something or to meet someone, to say something, or to do something. Every commanded blessing is activated by obedience. His commanded blessings are not free falling. I pray for you that in this month and beyond, the strength to obey God's voice receive in the mighty name of Jesus. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 2 to 6, the Bible says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook cherry that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook cherry that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Beloved, if Elijah had remained where he was when God gave that instruction to him, he would never have enjoyed the commanded. I pray for you one more time that the strength to live in obedience to God's instruction receive in the mighty name of Jesus. 
It was the act of obedience of Abraham also that activated the commanded blessings of God for his life. In Genesis 22 verse 15 to 18, And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. God has sworn that he will bless Abraham. However, it was his obedience to what God instructed that activated the blessing. If Abraham had withheld Isaac from God, God also would have kept his blessings to himself. So I want to say that again, that for you to enjoy God's commanded blessings, not only in this month of commanded blessings, but for the rest of your life, master God's voice so that you can hear him whenever he speaks to you. And when he does speak, no matter the cost, do whatever he asks you to do. As you walk in obedience this month, I declare prophetically that God will command his blessings on you, your family, and all that is connected to you in the mighty name of Jesus. He will command every supply you need to be sustained to come to you in the name of Jesus. I prophesy that God's blessings rest upon your hands in Jesus' name. The Lord will make your life a testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. God will take you from where you are now to where he has prepared for you to be blessed in Jesus' name. He will order everyone in position to take care of you, to look out for you in Jesus' name. And may the blessing of the Lord that makes rich without adding sorrow work for you this month in the mighty name of Jesus. You will enjoy your share of God's commanded blessings upon the citizens' church for all nations in the mighty name of Jesus. This month, the law shall remove every barrier to your progress in Jesus' name. And I say this with every authority that God has vested in me, that in this month of commanded blessings, you will enjoy unimaginable blessings in your going out and in your coming in in the mighty name of Jesus. I say that one more time by the fullness of God's authority upon me that in this month of commanded blessings, you will enjoy unimaginable blessing in your going out and in your coming in in the mighty name of Jesus. Can I get three powerful shouts of amen to that? I welcome you to the month of commanded blessings in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen and amen. Our midweek service for this Wednesday is at 5.45 p.m and it is an empowerment service, and it is directed towards Christians in politics. Please invite someone. Destiny Encounter Lodge Hour service is on Thursday, the 11th of April. Time is 11.30 a.m., and the theme is The Great Shepherd. Please invite your friends and colleagues. Next Sunday, April 14, is our casual dress service. The theme is focus on your future. Dress code is old school. We are counting down to the second Destiny Encounter service with Pastor Peter Balogun in 2024. Praise the Lord. The date is 22nd of April. Praise the Lord. My name is Pastor Peter Balogun, 
the lead pastor of the Citizens Church and the convener of Destiny Encounter Services. I want to seize this moment to invite you to the next Abuja Destiny Encounter Service themed Elim. What is Elim? Elim in Hebrew means something that comes from God, a divine provision from God, something that brings hope, respite. Elim is the place where the children of Israel found 12 wells of water and 70 date palm trees. I know some of you love to eat it. I love to eat date a lot. Very sweet and the sweetness of date doesn't bring any health issues to people. I want to invite you onto divine sweetness. I want to invite you onto divine refreshing. I want to invite you onto divine rest for those who are weary. For those who are tired, for those who need some level of sweetness in their lives, Elin is the place to be. Monday, 22nd of April, by 4.30 in the evening, at the Royalty Garden, the Covenant Hall of the Royalty Garden, we will be having the next Abuja Destiny Encounter service. It's going to be a time of intense prayers. We're going to worship, we're going to praise God, we're going to receive the life-transforming Word of God, and of course, there's going to be the manifestation of God's power that will break out in diverse miracles and testimonies. You don't want to miss that service. Don't come alone. Come with every member of your family. Come with your friends, your colleagues in the office. For those who may be far from the location, the service is going to be streamed live across all of our platforms. Please join and share the link to others as you join the service. It's going to be a, a wonderful time in the presence of God as we journey together to a limb, the place of rest, the place of sweetness. God bless you. Please start inviting your family and friends. Our special Thanksgiving service for this month shall be for legal and medical practitioners. Please start informing your friends, colleagues, and members of your family in these professions. If today is your first time at the Citizens Church for All Nations, we appreciate you and welcome you. We will recognize you further before the end of the service. If you are online, kindly indicate. If you are attending the service for the second time at TCC, God bless you for coming back to worship with us. Our vision statement is to raise men and women or will become citizens of God's kingdom and its ambassadors here on earth to build in people the kingdom mentality that will enable them live the kingdom life, life beyond restriction. You're welcome to the Citizens Church. For more information on our services and events, please visit the church website, www.thecitizenschurchng.org. Now our words on marble. Problems don't kill believers. Problems take believers to the place of fulfillment of destiny. If you hang in there enough, you will surely see the goodness of God. And that's from our lead pastor, PPB. That's the broadcast on TCBN. I am Olufunke Oloye. Remember, at TCC, we serve the Lord with joy. Thanks for watching. Have a great week ahead in Jesus' name. Amen.
hands to you. The Lord turned his face towards you.
be gracious to me. Lord, turn me. Lord, turn me. Face forward. Face forward to you. And give. And may the Lord give you peace in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord turn his face toward you. And may the Lord give you his peace in the mighty name of Jesus. As you raise your hands to the heavens, in the strength of the scripture that God has given us for this week, I speak over you that in this week, the Lord will make good things happen to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Contrary to the expectations of your haters, contrary to the expectations of your, of your detractors, contrary to the expectations of those who do not wish you well, I declare this week the Lord will make good things happen to you in the name of Jesus. If your amen will go louder, I said God will make good things happen to you in the name of Jesus. Everyone who speaks evil against your life, the Lord will clothe them with the garment of shame in the name of Jesus. God will clothe them with the garment of shame in the name of Jesus. They will wear shame like a coat. They will wear shame like a dress. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. This is a month of commanded blessings. You will enjoy unimaginable blessings. In your going out and in your coming in, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Great one or two persons around you and welcome them to the month of commanded blessings. Thank you, Queen. Today's our communion service. Um, is the communion service. The time we dine with the Lord. One of the greatest privileges that any human can enjoy on this side of eternity is the privilege of sitting at the table, dining with the maker of the heavens and the earth. And we're not just here to eat any kind of meal. We are not here to eat the meal prepared by the hands of man. We are here to eat the meal no one can explain how it came to be. Because the origin of God, the beginning of God, no one can explain. We have come to eat the meal that you really can't place any value on. When you go to any restaurant, they give you the menu card, you check the menu, and then you look at the, the price. You say, okay, this bottle of Coke is 10,000 Naira. This one is 5,000 Naira, so you select. But how do you place value? How do you place a price tag on a meal that you can't even explain? The meal that is a one-stop solution to every problem. One-stop answer to every issue of life. I count it one of the greatest privileges, if not the greatest privilege, that anyone can enjoy on this side of eternity. The problem with it and with us is that we have gotten so used to it that it has now become a mere observation of a religious right. Sometimes we come unprepared to the table to take the communion. 
In the occult world, they don't treat things that way. They do not. If they have the opportunity to sit to eat a human being, they go there intentional. The one that will have prepared that is the heart I'm going for. Will have prepared, I'm going for the heart. And this is the reason I'm going for the heart. The one that want to take the limbs will have made up his mind. I'm going there to take the limb because I need it to do this. It's only believers that come to the table of this mystery meal and we come unprepared. And that's why we take it and then we go back and nothing happens. So this morning, I want you to prepare your mind as you take the communion. Factor it into your imagination what you are getting out of this communion. Maybe you have an issue with your heart. Maybe you have an issue with your kidney. And you are saying, this is the body of Christ. I want to take the kidney today. Brethren, you will get a new kidney. You are having an issue with your sight. And you are saying, oh no, as I go to, the, to this table today, I want to take the eyes. <laughs> you get a new pair of, of eyes. Let's be intentional as we take this meal. And not just today. Anytime we come to the communion table, let's be intentional. Let's be intentional. Just like you don't eat every part of an animal, you slaughter chicken at home, you don't eat everything, you select the one you eat. You can be selective this morning and take something that would transform your life as we dine with the king. Commanded blessing. First Samuel chapter 10, verse 3 to 4. I'll read the easy translation of the Holy Scriptures. Samuel speaking to Saul. He says, after you leave there, you will reach the big tree at Tabo. Three men will meet you there. They are going to Bethel to worship God there. One of them will have three young goats with him. One of them will have three loaves of bread. The third man will have a bag full of wine. They will say hello to you. And they will offer you two loaves of bread. You must accept the bread. There is always the there that everyone must depart from in order to get to the there that God intends for them to be. In 1 Kings 17, God said to Elijah, he said, go to the east, go to the brook called Kerit. Hide yourself by the brook, drink water from the brook, eat the food that ravens will bring to you, he said, because I have commanded them to bring the food there. It was somewhere. It was at a location, but his commanded blessing was somewhere else. So there must be first a departure from where he was and an arrival at the destination. Nobody enjoys commanded blessing that does not receive divine instruction, divine guidance, divine leading. Everyone in the scriptures that ever enjoyed God's commanded blessings, received instruction from God. What does it mean to command? 
To command means to give an authoritative order. To command. It means to direct with specific authority. That's how computers run. They write out the command lines. The moment the command lines are correct, the computer responds. And it just continues like that. And it will take a man that has a good grasp of the computer software language, programming language, to issue such commands. It's not just putting together A plus X raised to power 2 and just write some things and then you feed the computer and you expect the computer to work. No. The person must first have an understanding of the hardware of the computer. Must have an understanding of the components and what they respond to before writing the things that he writes. Of course, there is nothing in creation whose hardware God doesn't know about. Because he, he created everything. So God knows what would run everything in creation. That's why God's command is overall. The Bible says where the word of the king is, there's power. And who may say to him, what doest thou? There is nothing in creation that can stand to question the command of God. Nothing in creation. And so when you get to the place where God has commanded his blessings, those blessings have no choice than to respond to you. Can I pray for one person? Only one person. The path that will take you to that place where God has commanded his blessings for your life. May God open your eyes to it in the name of Jesus. May God help you find it in the mighty name of Jesus. He said, after you live there, you will reach the big tree at Tabor. Very specific. Very specific. God said to Elijah too, he said, you will go to the river called chariot and stay by the brook very specific he said the one that is on the east not the one on the west because it's possible for you to have two three four rivers bearing the same name but he said this one i'm talking about is the one that is to the east there is a place beyond where you are right now where god's commanded blessings are waiting for you my prayer for you again this morning is that God will order your steps and will help you to get there in the mighty name of Jesus. What is a blessing? Because we're talking about commanded blessings. What is a blessing? A blessing is that which has the capacity to bring happiness. Anything that is capable of bringing happiness or bringing joy or bringing fulfillment, or putting a smile on your face, is a blessing. So when we're talking about blessings, we're not just talking about physical things, we're not just talking about things you can touch, we're talking about everything that is capable of bringing joy to you. Everything that is capable of bringing happiness. Everything that is capable of bringing fulfillment to your life. Something that will happen and you'll say, wow, thank God. Thank God. That's a blessing. So when you join the two together, commanded blessing, therefore, are those things that God himself have authorized to come to us in order for us to live happy lives, fulfilled lives. Nobody knows you better than God. Hello? In fact, God knows you better than yourself. You, you don't know nothing about yourself. So God knows those things that you need to be happy. He knows those things that you need to be fulfilled. And I pray for you this morning, if you will stand and lift your hands to the heavens to receive, that that which you need for you to be happy, for you to be at peace, 
for you to be fulfilled, the Lord will command it on you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Only one person said, Amen. I said, God will command it on you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God will command it on you in the mighty name of Jesus. Command the blessings they have within themselves the power to bring fulfillment. They have it. See, it is not every good thing or everything that appears good that is a blessing. I hope you know that. It is not. It's not everything that glitters that is a blessing. Not everything. It is possible to receive something that looks good and you are sad. Because that thing is not giving you the desired fulfillment. It's not giving you the desired happiness. It's not giving you the desired joy. To so some others, that could be a source of happiness, but not to you. And if it is not bringing that happiness to you, if it is not giving you that joy, if you don't have that, that sense of fulfillment from it, then it is not a blessing. First Kings chapter 17 verse 4. God said to Elijah, New Living Translation, he says, drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you. We never saw in that passage that Elijah was unhappy drinking water from the brook. We never saw from that place that he was unhappy eating the meat that the ravens brought. They came and they met his desire. He was happy eating. He was happy drinking. In fact, he became sad when they think, when the brook dried. You see, it is a blessing when you become sad running out of that thing. There is a blessing. When the absence of that thing makes you sad, then that thing is a blessing. If you feel good that that thing is not present, then it wasn't a blessing in the first place. I want to pray for you one more time. Because when you read that verse 3 of First Samuel chapter, chapter 10, it says, after you live there, you will reach the big tree at Tabor. Tabor was the destination for the fulfillment of God's commanded blessings for Saul. I want to pray for you. That in this month of commanded blessing and beyond, the Lord will help you to arrive at that place where commanded blessings are waiting for you in the name of Jesus. It will help you to arrive at that destination in the mighty name of Jesus. It will help you to arrive at that place in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, God has a place prepared for every commanded blessing. He has a place prepared. And sometimes we could wait for the blessings of God to come and meet us where we are. But for commanded blessings, God will take you to where they are waiting. God will take you there. I said God will take you there. In the mighty name of Jesus. When you are in the place of commanded blessings, you don't worry your head about provision. You don't worry your head about anything because they naturally will respond to you, naturally will answer to you. It wasn't Elijah's problem to think where the ravens were getting the meat. It wasn't his problem. Even though it was a strange thing for birds to be bringing meat, cooked meat. Do they have a bakery somewhere? But it wasn't his problem. He didn't care. All he wanted was meat and meat came. Because the moment you find yourself at that location where commanded blessings await you, you need not bother your head anymore. Things will begin to fall in place for you. I pray for you. May you never miss the place of your commanded blessings in the name of Jesus. If you don't say amen very well, I'll stop praying. I pray that prayer one more time. May you never miss the location of your commanded blessings in the name of Jesus. 
Peter experienced what it means to enjoy commanded blessings. Matthew chapter 17, verse 27. Let me read that from the voice translation. You see, that embarrassing situation has already been taken care of by God. The reason you still find yourself in that situation is that you couldn't make it to the place where the commanded blessing that should have answered to that issue was kept. Tax collectors, they came to Jesus and his disciples and they said, you have not paid your tax. Maybe like the landlord came to you that you are, you are still owing, you have not paid your rent. So you've not paid your, your tax. And then they were arguing back and forth. And Jesus in verse 27 says, but in all, I'm reading the voice translation. He said, but all in all, it's better not to make any waves. We better go on and pay the tax. You know, sometimes it is when you don't have money, you talk too much. Do you understand? You price and overprice when there's no money. Are we on a different planet? Yes, now. If, if, if I'm holding in my hands one billion naira and then I want to buy something, I say it's 100,000. Do I have to bother my head? It's just a scratch and I just put it down. But when you don't have, all you have is maybe 200,000. And the exact thing is 100,000. Uh, you start pricing. You say, I'll go waiting now. Now because dollar go I You will talk and talk and talk. Then you apply the style of walk away. They call you back. You walk away like five times. Brethren, it's because you don't have money. Some people don't even have time to start asking. If you are saying that much, bring, did I ask you for the price? Bring it. And they just paid. <laughs> so that's what Jesus was saying. He said, we better go on and pay the tax. Don't, we should not start all this debate. He said, so do this. Go out to the lake and throw out your line. And when you catch a fish, not if you catch a fish. Because God already provided for it. It's not a question of probability. It's a question of when. He said, when you catch a fish, open its jaws, and you will find a four drachma coin. Very specific. You will find one bale of 1,000 naira notes there. Very specific. He said, take this to the tax collectors and pay your taxes and mine. We were not told for how long that fish had been carrying that money. But the fish was carrying that money for such a time as this. God knew that that time would come. God knew that that embarrassing situation would come. And God already prepared an answer. He's commanded blessing. That fish could not vomit it. For as long as it took for Peter to come, the fish kept it there. I don't know how that fish was eating. It's like, I want to hide. You cannot even hide food in your mouth. <laughs> I want to hide. I say, okay, this piece of meat, put it in your mouth. Don't swallow it all. Don't chew it all. Just keep it there. Now, is it possible that with that meat in your mouth, you will still be able to eat any other thing? So that fish must have been hungry. Only God knows for how many. How many months, how many weeks. But because he, he was under the command of God, he had no choice. He kept it there. You see, those blessings, they have not escaped you. Because God commanded them for you. The problem is you are yet to get to the location where they are. Can I pray for you? I can't see the person no. I'm praying especially for those 
who are going through embarrassing situations that require one supply or the other. I pray for you that in the course of this week, we are the provision, we are the supply that will attend to that need is the Lord will take you there in the name of Jesus. God will take you there in the name of Jesus. God will take you there in the name of Jesus. God will take you there in the name of Jesus. God will take you there in the name of Jesus. Brethren, there is not one commanded blessing that is not obedient activated. Not one. Every commanded blessing is activated by obedience. We listen to that in the monthly declaration. Everyone. Why didn't Peter ask a question? Peter has been in the fishing business all his life. Jesus never fished. Yes, maybe he was helping them to, to make the keno. That you are able to make a keno doesn't mean that you know how to fish. He was a carpenter. And then he was instructing a fisherman to go and catch fish and bring money out of his mouth. Something that has never happened. Yet, Peter didn't question him. He didn't say, be like, say something, don't they wrong go. He went and did as Jesus said. Obedient. Sometimes God will give us ridiculous instruction. What appears unreasonable instructions. Jesus was going to go to Jerusalem and they didn't, didn't want to go there like an ordinary person, at least for once. Let them know also that I'm royal. So he said to his disciples, go into the village over against you. He said, at the entering into the village, you will find a colt that is tied. He said, lose it and bring it. If anyone asks you, what doest thou? Say to them, the master has need for it. You don't understand what kind of a hard thing Jesus asked them to go and do. You don't understand. As close as I am to you, at least you know me. Maybe I'm your pastor. I'm your pastor. I come to your house. Maybe you have, this is your keyboard. That's what you are using in your house. And I, I start to unplug. I say, uh, Pastor, what's up to say? This one, I'm sending it somewhere. God has need of this one in the mission field. You first give me one, one eye like this. But the respect you have for me will not make you to say out what is in your heart. But if I look closely at your face, I'll know what you are saying. Oh, is that how God has need for things? Don't worry, I'll put it to practice. If I get to your car ahead of you after service, you must drop the key of that car. Because I will tell you the Lord has need. But they went. And then you were untying another man's donkey. You're not even afraid. And true to it, the owner of the car said, ah, what's happening here? The last time I checked, this thing belonged to me. He said, the, the master. And he didn't bother to ask them, which master? And he just released it. The Yorubas have a saying, any run initial aberu, it is the person that is sending you on an errand that you fear. Don't be afraid of the person you are going to deliver the message. That's what they did. They just went and they did what God asked them to do. Every commanded blessing is activated by obedience. Jesus said to Peter, cast your net on the right side. 
Can I ask you a question? Because some of us are more intelligent than me. Truly. That's the truth. This is your kennel. You are inside the kennel. You have fished all night. You didn't catch anything. And then somebody says, cast the net on the right. What's the difference between the right side of the kennel and the left side of the kennel? As far as catching a fish is concerned. The fish sees how many degrees? How many degrees? Fish. The eyes of the fish. How many degrees? 360. This is 360. So from where the fish is, it's seen 360. So if your bait is here, he's seeing it. If he's here, he's seeing it. If he's here. So if any, any fish was there, they would have seen that thing now. He didn't say leave Abuja, go to Lokoja and go and fish on another river. The same place. How big was the canoe? That the right side will make a difference from the left side. But because it was a divine instruction and he obediently did what Jesus asked him to do, the unimaginable happened. And the Bible says that he, 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 he caught so many fishes that the net began to break. It wasn't the right side that was the thing. It was the obedience to the command that did it. I'm emphasizing on the obedience part of it because we will pray, we will shout, and then we keep waiting. And God keeps giving instruction. Especially when the instructions are not so convenient for us. May God give us a heart to obey him in the mighty name of Jesus. I said may God give us a heart to obey him in the mighty name of Jesus. Numbers chapter 11 verse 31 Common English Bible translation. God told Moses, the children of Israel were asking for food. They were crying. They needed food. And God said, go and tell them. They should go to bed. By the time they are waking up in the morning, they will have more, more meat that they can eat. Moses didn't ask God how. He didn't ask God how. We're talking about a people of about 500,000, according to theologians, there were about 500,000 that left Egypt. Of course, along the way, they multiplied. Let's even say 500,000. How were they to get meat in the morning? How many hunters will Moses engage to go and bring meat? But he didn't ask God. He just went and told them, hey, all of you are disturbing me too much. Go and sleep. By the time you wake up in the morning, you have meat to eat. And they went and slept. <laughs> Let me tell you the risk that guy took with his life. <laughs> if in the morning there was no meat, they would have stoned him to death. You know the way the Bible describes them? Stiff-necked people. They will have killed Moses. He said, eh, so you just tricked us to go and sleep. But by the time they woke up, they found meat. How did it happen? Numbers 11.31. Common English Bible translation. I, I just love the way um, it presents it. He says, a wind from the Lord blew up and brought quails from the sea. It let them fall 
by the camp about a day's journey all around the camp and about three feet deep on the ground. Quails are not amphibians. Quails are what? Birds. How come it was from the sea that the quails came? Birds. You see, you can't rationalize God's commanded blessings with your head. You cannot. You cannot. God says, cattle on a thousand hills belong to me. But he didn't bring cattle from the hills. He went inside the sea to go and bring birds. So God won't come from the direction you're expecting. He won't come. He won't do it the way you want him to do it. He will do it his own way. His own way. Quails from the sea. And look at it. It, it was like they have imprisoned them there. And now, for once, they were free to fly. If you were one of those quills, how high would you have flown? But see what the Bible says. The Bible says that it let them fall by the camp. So there was a force compelling them. You can't fly beyond hell. Even though you are happy that now you can fly, you can use your wings. The reason I freed your wings is to carry you from where you were to where I want you to be. Drop. And they began to drop. They dropped. The Bible says about a day's journey all around the camp and about three feet deep on the ground. Three feet is like um, maybe like here. Okay, like this height. It was this high and it was a day's journey. How many of us have trekked for a day before? You have trekked for a day. How many of us? How many of us have trekked for an hour before? Or oh, 30 minutes? 30 minutes. Now imagine the 30 minutes that you have to be walking through a heap of chicken three feet high for that length. Picture it. How massive it could be. Now the Bible says the one that God brought was a day's journey. One day's journey. That probably will be like from here to after Lokoja. Right? Maybe after Lokoja. The provision was super abundant. That the children of Israel, as they were eating, through their mouth, the thing was coming. <laughs> God will give you blessings that are more than your need in the mighty name of Jesus. Again, I, I, I want to emphasize on obedience. Whatever God says to you to do, please do. Whatever he says to you to do, please do. How many of us are ready for God's commanded blessings? Okay, they are only on this side. Oh, I have a few people here. If you are ready for God's commanded blessing, be upstanding, please. Yeah, God will show you your own place too. See, you didn't hear. I said God will show you your own place too. <laughs> You see, all these people that we, we talked about, God showed them. He showed them. God will show you your own too. Put your right hand to the heavens. And I want you to just pray to God. Talk to him. You've heard his word. Talk to him. Talk to him. What 
picture were you seeing as the sermon was going on? Where did you see yourself as the message was going on? What convictions did you have about the things around your life as the sermon was going on? What assurances? Ah! Money from the mouth of a fish? I know that God will do this one for me too. Do you have such a persuasion? I want you to communicate it to God. And say, Lord, I have seen it. That there is nothing your commanded blessing cannot answer to. I have seen it. That there is nothing that can stand in the way of a man that is under your commanded blessings. Father, this is my prayer. Make your prayer to the Lord. This is my prayer. Make your prayer to the Lord. Make your prayer to the Lord. Make your prayer to the Lord. Make your prayer to Him. Don't forget that blessings are not just about the physical things. They're not just about tangible things. Maybe it's in the area of your health. It could be anything. Say, Lord, this is my conviction. This is my persuasion. I know that you will do this for me. I know that you will do this for me. Take me to the place where you have commanded your blessings for my life. Help me to do what I need to do. Help me to meet who I need to meet. Help me to get to the place I need to get to. Make that your prayer. Make it your prayer. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. And I want you to connect that to the communion. Connect your prayer to the communion. And say, Father, I know there is nothing that I need that you cannot provide. All that I've asked, all that I've requested, I see them provided for in this communion. As I take this communion today, let it be a one-stop answer, a one-stop solution, a one-stop supply to all of my needs. Go ahead and talk to God.
seated. Let's be seated. The choir will be singing. The moment you are served, you can stand. Keep the bread and keep the wine. We will take it together. Once you are served, you stand and then you join in the worship. Let's sing. Baby 
you are yet to be served. So we all have been served. I want you to lift those items up to God. I want us to connect our healings to this commitment. I said something while I was preaching. I said if there is any part of your body that is dysfunctional, you can say to God, from the body of Christ today, I'm taking this part. You can pray that prayer for yourself. You can stand also in the gap for someone that is there to you. And say, Lord, yes, it is defective in my body, but it is not in your body. It is sickly in my body, but it is not in your body. What we are doing this morning is replacement of parts. That's what we're doing this morning. Say, Lord, I'm replacing this faulty part with the one I'm taking from the body of your son. Go ahead and say that to him. Say it in faith. Thank you, Father. Lord, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are were not made of the things which do appear. You are the one who calls forth the things that be not as though they are. Father, thank you for every demand that has been placed upon this meal today in the strength of the command the authoritative order that you have issued I stand as your servant to speak in assurance to every one of your children that that which is the expectation this meal will answer to it in the mighty name of Jesus. For those who trust you for replacement of body parts, I'm asking my Lord and my Father that as they ingest this meal, let it bring about a replacement of any defective part of their bodies in the mighty name of Jesus. May this communion of today connect you to that location, that destination where God's commanded blessings await you in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever it is that you demand of this communion, may the Lord grant unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. You may please take the communion.
appreciate him, thank him. If indeed you know that God has answered your prayers, go ahead and appreciate him. Hallelujah. Can we please stand and let's stretch forth our hands to our pastor. He has prayed for us. He has blessed us with the word. Let's pray for him. If you can't be praying for him, sitting down, please. Let's stand. Let's pray for God's grace upon his life to be increased. Let's ask that the Lord will continually strengthen him. That that which he has calling for, he will continually empowered and increase him to do it more. Let's pray for him. Pray for him that he will get to that place of his commanded blessings too. In the name of Jesus. That that place that the Lord has orchestrated for him to get to. To be able to get connected to that blessing that the Lord will hold that him there too. Let's pray for him. That the work of the ministry will be easy for him. Let's pray for him. That the peace that passed said her human understanding will continually be his at all time in the name of Jesus. Let's pray for him. That every of his heartfelt desire, every of his expectation that the Lord will meet in the name of Jesus. Pray for him that he will not be weary. He will not be weary. He will not be tired. We can all see all he's doing. Let's pray for him. Lord, we pray for our pastor, O King of Glory. We ask that you continually strengthen him in the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh God, that he will not be tired. He will not be weary in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you make the work of the ministry easy for him in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, O oh God, let every of his heartfelt desire concerning this work, O oh God, cause it to come to pass in the name of Jesus. Surround him with people, O oh God, that Lord will lead him, that will help him with all that he desires to see in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, that you will keep his home, you will keep his family, you will keep his ministry in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can we please have our seat? It's time for us to give our offering and tithes. I'd like to encourage those that are giving their offering to package it and give God a beautiful offering. And also our tithes. Let's package our tithes and let the tithe comes out to drop their tithe here. Why the offering basket go round? Go round. Hallelujah. In case you need to make a transfer, we have it. The account number is on the screen. Can we please pray? Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you. We appreciate you. We worship you for who you are. Lord, we want to thank you for the opportunity you have given unto us to give this morning. We ask, O oh God, that as you are giving, O oh King of oh Glory, you will bless all our offering in the name of Jesus. Bless all, as many, O oh Lord, that desire to give, that do not have this morning. We ask, O oh God, that when next they will be in your presence, Lord, they will have in the name of Jesus. You will increase them. You will bless them. You will open door for them in the name of Jesus. And for the titans, we ask for God that Lord, you rebuild the devourer for their sake in the name of Jesus. That the canker one will not hit, oh God, all their crops in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, they are pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
Have you been blessed today? Why not celebrate Jesus? Celebrate the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Celebrate your Father. Celebrate Jesus, the God of heaven and earth. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate God. God bless you. We have some special people in our midst today. If today is your first time worshiping with us here at the Citizens Church, may I see your hands? If you are here for the first time, mm, God bless you. You are that VIP. Please rise for recognition. Rise for recognition. Church, celebrate them the Citizens Church way. Celebrate them. God bless you. If you, are, if you are on transit, the Lord will take you back to your destination. But if you reside here in Abuja, we look forward to seeing you again and again. Our pastor, the lead pastor of the Citizens Church, will be delighted to pastor you if you give him the opportunity. God bless you. Please look to my left, to my right. You see some members of the citizen of the reception team. They'll take you to a place specially prepared for you, and they'll tell you more about the church. Church, celebrate them. Our second time guest, God bless you for coming. We see you and we love you. Please listen to the following announcement. Leaders, the lead pastor will meet with us after the service. Wednesday is our empowerment service by 5.30. On Thursday is a public holiday. And the service, that's the, the, the launch hour service, the theme is the Great Shepherd. Please do well to attend the lead, lead pastor expect every one of us to be in church at 11.30 a.m. Please rise as we bring the service to a close. Please rise. I know I appreciate God for today. I appreciate him for today's service. I appreciate him. I appreciate him. I appreciate the great God, the good God. I appreciate your father. Thank him for today's communion service. Thank him for the blessings that will come. Father, we glorify your name. We thank you for this week. You would, this week you will, you will lead us aright in the name of Jesus. This week we favor us in the name of Jesus. To favor every member of our family in the name of Jesus. This week will bring immeasurable blessings for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. The grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen.